Hello everyone, Dodger487 here with another part of Diablo 2. Guess what I can do now? Golem. So this is the clay golem. Creates a clay golem from the earth to fight by your side. Its stats are a little better than t standard skeletons. So not much in the way of damage in that regard, but you know it's only level 1, and it gets stronger with each level up. So I got one more minion to fight by my side, and instead of questing to go and save Kane, I'm gonna explore the cave levels in the cold plains which I have a good chance of dying in because there are some tough enemies down here if this game is the same as I remember now we got actual skeletons to deal with on our side I'm just going to toss this up here in case I decide to wuss out and not get into the fray with my minions. Oh, and if you notice, I'm now using a jagger, Jagged Scepter of Shock, which normally only provides bonuses to the Paladin skill set, but this weapon has a plus 50% damage to undead and in this case I'm fighting a lot more undead than anything else gather gold crack open the chest get these arrows quantity of 350 can I do any more? nope so I'm carrying around these items because I don't remember if socketed items have more value than the other crap. There we go. W is the hotkey to switch between the item sets. Don't need that health trying. So I looked up a couple of tricks. So yeah, I'll know if socketed items or ethereal items are worth more than their standard counterparts once I head back into the town. So looking up some trip tricks to playing this game since I last played it. If you hotkey the normal attack to the right mouse button, you're able to just wander around and auto attack enemies without having to individually select And I've been cursed. And I just gained a level up. Didn't want to get that one. But you know why not. Can't forget the items up here. I am overburdened. Oh, of course I am. Oh, look at that. Alright, let's head back into town with the my stats later. Don't have any crap to identify at the moment. Good day. Alright. 85 and 36. So I'm gonna say no to that. My god. Cell value of one. It doesn't even have durability. So those are useless for the most part. How much do these heal me? 60. Which is the majority of my life. 
these just insta heal if I remember correctly a portion of my life which I don't plan on utilizing just yet and yeah those potions are not worth it keys are worth it especially if I can sell multiple stacks I'm just going to run over to Charcy and make a comparison before I ditch those. So I got one, two, three, four, five. 80 times 20 is 1600. Yeah. So another tip I learned while perusing around is that if you hold shift and right click on scrolls and whatnot, they automatically stack up to the maximum value that a tome of identify can hold, which costs a pretty penny overall, but you know, it's not like I'm doing much with my gold. So that. Nope. As much as I would love to do that, I don't have any socketed items. Socketable items. Just yet. Plus 10% faster hit recovery. Now with such piddly damage. Is it defense? Nope. And last but not least, one to maximum damage and increase the stamina. Yeah. Rugged Ring of Craftsmanship. Alright then. Almost certain I'm not gonna make a profit off of this. What you need? Then again. How the hell would I know? Alright. So we got this sword and this sword. Two to eight for a bit more damage. And just to prove as much. Yeah, socketable items and ethereal items are both garbage. Need me some... What you hoot you call it? That's worth it. Magical item properties. You got a magic bow on you. Well, why not? Alright then. Uh, 6 to 12. Plus 4% mana stolen per hit. 4 to 11. Uh, I think I'll hold off on buying items for the time being. Okay, I may have earned a bit of a profit from that. Alright then. I can either do more Ray Skeleton, which increases attack, defense, and I think damage. Life damage. No, whereas this increases both attack. Nope. Yeah, attack. Maybe defense. Uh, I don't know. This is the kind of crap I always debate about. Now uh, let's go with this. I think I'll be focusing on golems more than skeletons up to a certain point. Alright then. How much crap do I have boosting my strength? Uh, 
Alright. Works for me, I suppose. Alright, now, hopefully, this isn't gonna screw me over. There we go. Shift and left click automatically stacks it into uh, whatever slot on my belt. Uh, nothing else to grab over here, so let's continue on. Now this is just a personal matter on my part, and there's a massive port of enemies, but it's games like this, other than, you know, old favorites of mine, but it's like RPGs and whatnot, which I'm way more into than, say, most other games. Like, take for example the... Quake 4 and... Oh, what's it called? Street Legal Racing Redline games I have going as well. I am far less interested in playing those games. Even though I remember cr clearly stating that Quake 4 was an old favorite of mine. Well, that was mostly because it was one of the most developed games that I used to have available for me to play back when I was younger. Of course, it had to be installed on an old man's computer and run this garbage on my own. But I enjoyed it nonetheless. But you know, I would always prefer something like Diablo 2 over a game like that. Just about any day. It helps that Diablo has more going for it than the typical FPS shooter. Did I pick up? Yeah, I picked up a ruby, ruby earlier before. And what I mean Diablo has more going for it is stuff like the random factor when it comes to gathering items and whatnot. There's a lot more depth to it than I would and something like Quake 4. Not that Quake 4 doesn't have depth, but you know, you're basically running from one area to the next, shooting a bunch of cyborg monstrosities over and over again. Okay, this is what I was talking about in regards to me getting my ass kicked earlier. Down a skeleton. Stop shooting me. Yeah, Cold Crow is the enemy I have to watch out for because she's something of a powerhouse at this level for me. I can bet your pretty little butts that I would have taken a lot of damage if I was within range of that blast. She has 3 to 11 damage. I'll put that to good use. That's still better. I can't use that. What? Oh, required level. Well, that sucks. I'm pretty sure that won't do any good. Better, right? I'll put that to good use. Yeah, more defense. I guess I can sell those. I'll deal with those later. 
Now my inventory is just starting to stack up from scrolls, which I can't place into the tomes anymore. Because, you know, I totally need to fill up those scro those tomes with scrolls. Back to melee, and now let's pass off. Ooh, gold. More skeletons to kill. Oh, and what do we have over here? Why, indeed, we have the cave level 2. Which, if I remember correctly, also poses its assortment of monstrosities to deal with. And I'm out of run juice. If I'm not mistaken, there should be like an enemy... Nope. That's what it was. More super-powered Dark Rangers. up against his head. Ooh, gold. Ooh, a sparkly chest. Gold, gold. Healing potion. Chip topaz, mana. Healing potion. Gold, gold, gold. Mana potion. Gold, gold, fancy hat, and more gold. Um, I don't think there's anything else in this section of the cave. So I can't carry any more. Oh, really? Oh. Oh, isn't that all nice and pretty? I can't do that a second time. Uh, and... I'll just grab one more thing and then head on out. Maybe. Oh. Depends on what I find. Well, that happened now, didn't it? Alright then. Do 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 do. Good evening. Everyone gets healed up. Uh, I don't know if that was worth it or not. Doesn't matter. All right, bitter blazer boots. Say that three times fast. Faster hit recovery, enhanced defense. Yep. Plus one to dexterity. Already better than my old ones. Uh, maximum stamina. Repairs one durability in 33 seconds, and ethereal cannot be repaired. So it's like my own self-repairing boots. Energy resist. Sheer defense alone is overcompensating for everything else. Raven splitter hand axe. 3 to 8, 6 to 12. 5% chance to cast level 1 amplify damage on striking. 
plus two to maximum damage, plus ten to attack rating, and a bit more fire damage. Overall, not entirely worth it. At least not better than my scepter. Attack radius and light radius. got these fat little potions over here which sell for 150 each and these healing potions which don't sell for nearly as much. Alright, how much do these go for? 60? Yeah. Might as well make use of these while I can. And picking up health potions to sell is almost entirely redundant. Uh, I guess those qualify as being worth it. If I'm not mistaken, I believe I'm selling crap for about half its value. 150 and 75. Yep. Alright, dump these in here. Dude. Dude. Dump the cash because why not? Go and repair my gear. Good day. Including this. That doesn't have a durability. Alright then. Just gonna take a pop back into the cave first level. Just double check. How much bolts does this one have? 311. Better safe than sorry in my opinion. Alright, is there anything left in this cave for me to explore? Oh. Hot damn. There is because I was a stupid little moron and forgot to explore over yonder. Now if I'm not mistaken, this map, this level layout is always the same for all playthroughs. Because I vaguely remember this design way back in yonder years when I used to play this game. And I read somewhere, while looking for gameplay tips, that various levels also maintain the same lo layout throughout every single playthrough. Just have to be thorough. And there's nothing over here. Well, isn't that fun and dandy? Sitting at 23 minutes in the recording. Uh, I got a bit more. Gonna head over to the next area. Gonna ignore these guys because chances are they don't really have anything on them. And yeah, I'm just gonna lollygag around until I find the wait in the area so I don't have to find it again. Gold. And just because I'm curious about crap like this, is the superior items which tend to have a habit of falling on the ground. I'm wondering if they're worth getting my hands on.
like if they're worth selling when I take them to market. And I'll find that the next time I head into town. Yeah, the stony field. Need to find... stuff in here. After finding the scroll of interests, Inifes, I need to make my way back here so that I can do a thing. And with a new area, the town becomes new enemies. Like those goat people. Whose name is Moon Clan and Foul Crow. do that. Grab the large charm. Still got plenty of space in my inventory. And take out this thing because it just spells up more of those enemies. So, oh, booby trap. Well, that was way easier than I thought it was going to be. Just head back to town. Run over to Akara. Get all filled up. And... Maybe... I suppose it depends. But yeah, magic items have a oh, far greater return. And all that crap. And, nope. So, guess that answered my question. Toss that in there. Head on over to the stony field. And now I'm gonna look for the stone circle. Sin bang the hell out. Some extra fat. Potion Club, Rejuvenation, Gold. If I tend to use my skeletons often enough, I might want to keep them at least on par with all the levels as well. And if I understand my stat growth correctly, I'm not going to have to invest anything in energy because by the time I get to whatever level, I should have enough base mana in order to actually summon all the critters that are accessible to me. And that means I can continue playing the Necromancer wrong by focusing on more physical stats. Because as much fun as it is having my skeletons go all the way, I don't quite have it in me to just sit back and let them do all their things. And... And so it came to pass that the Countess, who once bathed in the rejuvenating blood of a hundred virgins, was buried alive. And her castle, in which so many cruel deeds took place, fell rapidly into ruin. Rising over the buried dungeons in that godforsaken wilderness, a solitary tower, like some monument to evil, is all that remains. The Countess's fortune was believed to be divided among the clergy, although some say that more remains unfound, still buried alongside the rotting skulls that bear mute witness to the inhumanity of the human creature. Say what? I got a new quest. The Forgotten Tower. Look for the tower in the black marsh beyond the dark wood. For those of you unaware, that just means, do I automatically stack the equipped arrows 
when I pick up a new stack. Ah, uh, well, not entirely significant to me. Yeah, that means that in one of the areas up ahead, I have a tower to look for. Albeit dilapidated and in ruins. And in it, I get to look for the counter. Because you know I'm all about that sparkly gold, which is rumored to be in there. I think it's kind of cheap to introduce a quest by having some book in the middle of nowhere give mention to it. I think like the demons in the area would use it for toilet paper if that's the thing that they have to do. But no, they just decided to leave it undisturbed. Let it do its thing. Ooh. Found the edge of this. Found this part of the edge of the map. Carvers this time around. Well, that's a thing that happened. Found me the set of cairn stone in the area. And Rath Kanaishu, if that's his name. Rakanaishu? I think that's his name. He keeps wandering up. Rakanaishu. So yeah. That little bugger likes to hang around this place and guard. Didn't need to get that. Chug. Yeah, that bugger likes to hang around and he's something of a threat because he automatically discharges lightning whenever he is I am drunk. And what I wanted to do was pick up this and give it to her. That to good use. Yes, more damage. And there's nothing special about it. Can I do some rearranging here? Make a little more room? So yeah, I was expecting a far more tedious search when it comes to like looking for these stones and the town portal as well. So, let's hear what the necromancer has to say about these cairn stones. I sense many spirits around the stones. Fascinating. Still got all my minions running around me. It's always nice. Don't have to waste the mana trying to revive them. And here is the underground passage level 1, which means I have to mosey my ass on through that underground passage in order to make it to the dark wood, which if I remember correctly has a waypoint of its own, and I don't have to walk through some creepy ass tunnel. I ought to make my way through. At some point I'm going to stop picking up these potions when I feel it's no longer necessary and I'm rolling in that sparkly shiny dough. Just going to explore this little bit of the area, then call it a night. Because why not? I am overburdened. Well, that happened. Die, die, die again. Because you're already dead. I got me a short sword, which is probably worth more than what these can offer me. 
pick up the sword. Don't got enough room for all those. Head on over here. Kill these light venom. Well, so much for that. I got a throwing knife. A magical throwing knife. Uh... Oh, but, uh, no, I don't have enough room either way. Oh well. Alright then. Hop on through. Run over here. Talk to Akara. Yes. Identify. Identify. Already identify. 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 And. So was this worth it? Not really, no. This was worth it. Which just increases attack rating, which means accuracy. Same as this thing, which my companion can use. That was kind of worth it. Uh, this wasn't worth it. And... Screw that noise, because that's not worth it either. Teleporter on the bottom. Sell. 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 And then head back on through here. Yoink. Light mana, light mana. Run back over here because there's no some items I ditched. Grab you, grab you, and grab you. And with that, I'm done for tonight. So, I always end up back in town anyway after I quit the game. So, Thank you everybody for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.